Hello. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of how to wire and program an Arduino microcontroller using Tinkercad circuits. Tinkercad circuits is a uh, online emulator that can simulate circuits and it has the capability of using uh, Arduino also. So this is going to cover from getting a Tinkercad Circuits account set up all the way through our very first exercise. And along the way, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks of how to use the software effectively. So the first thing we're going to do is go and get Tinkercad. So easiest way to do it is go on the computer, go to Google. Uh, I would mention use Google Chrome. Uh, we've run into some issues with uh, Explorer. So, but I know that Google Chrome works fairly well with, for this. So type in Tinkercad, T-I-N-K-E-R-C-A-D. And if you hit enter, then the very first search result is going to be Tinkercad. Click on that. This is going to take you to the Tinkercad home screen. Tinker, Tinkercad is part of Autodesk. And if you have an existing Autodesk account, you can log in with that. If you don't have an account yet, you're going to need to hit join now. So you'll have to click up in the upper right hand corner to join now. It's a free account. Uh, all you need to do is put in your birthday and an email and then you're all set. Uh, if you have an account already, click on sign in and we can sign in in an existing account. Uh, so I'm going to sign in. Once you sign in, it's going to take you to the uh, initial screen. Your initial screen, if you uh, haven't had an account before and you just signed up, is going to be blank. And in this case, this is blank. Now, the one thing I will mention is that Tinkercad can do a few different things. You can do 3D models, you can do circuits, and there's a couple other things. Uh, so over on the left-hand side over here, uh, by default, it'll come up to 3D designs. We're going to click on the circuits tab. So click on the circuits and that is the one that we're going to be using. Now, what we're going to do is create a new circuit. Uh, and in this case, um, we can click right on the button, create new circuit. This is going to take us to the new circuit screen. Now on the main screen here, this is our workspace that we're going to be using. On the right hand side, we have uh, our components over here. There is a drop down that uh, has different component selections. In this case, the basic drop down is the one that we'll be using the most. Um, there are some other ones here, but we're not going to necessarily use those. Uh, up at the top, there's some commands. Also, we'll talk a little bit about those later and a few more over on this side here. And now, uh, also, up at the top, it has kind of a randomly given name, and this is the default name of your, your project. Later on, we're going to change that, and I'm going to show you how to change that uh, once we get the first one complete. But first thing we want to do is pull in our Arduino and a breadboard that will be part of our design. So over in the component screen, we can scroll down. And we're going to find an Arduino Uno. That is the uh, Arduino that we will be using. So click and drag and you can pull it onto the screen here. And you can just release and it'll place it. It will bring up a little window here that asks you to name it. In this case, we're not going to be too interested in naming each of these components. So if that comes up, you can just ignore it. Once you deselect that component, click on the back of the screen, it will uh, go away. The other thing that I want to put on here is a breadboard. Now this breadboard is not necessarily required to do our designs, but I want you to get familiar with using a breadboard uh, for once we actually get uh, using the actual Arduinos instead of the virtual emulator here. So we can click and drag the breadboards, uh, the small breadboard onto the screen. Again, it's going to give you a menu or a little box up here. We don't need to worry about that. But the one thing I do want to do is I want to rotate this so it's in a different orientation. And with the item selected, so if I'm going to click off the screen, deselect it, you can see that's deselected. And what I want to do is select onto this. Now what I want to make sure is, is that I don't highlight one of these dots where I get a red dot coming up. I want to click on it so I don't have that, so I select that breadboard. Once I select that breadboard, up in the upper left-hand corner, there is a rotate com uh, 
button. You can click it and it's going to rotate it to the right. Now I will tell you there is a shortcut key on the keyboard which is R. Once it's selected you can hit R and it will rotate it also. You don't need to click on the rotate button. So there's two ways to do that. Um, and what we'll do is I'm going to move this up just a little bit just so we have uh, a little bit more room. Now in this case we have our two main components. Whenever you start one of your new exercises, this is pretty much how I want you to get to start out. Now, one of the things that you can do is with your scroll wheel on your mouse, you can zoom in and out. So if you need more space to put uh, more components on the screen, you can zoom in and out that way. Um, once you get to a point and you're like, I want to zoom into all, there is a button up in the upper left hand corner here that is the zoom to fit. It's the circle with a little square inside of it. Click on that and it will zoom to fit the, the circuit that is on the screen. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to start wiring this up. Now, before we start wiring it up, I want to connect up the breadboard to the Arduino in uh, one special way. You can see that on the breadboard, we have the plus and the minus rails here. I want to hook the plus up to five volts. I want to hook the minus up to ground. So I'm going to show you how to do that. What we have is the five volts on the Arduino right over here. So I'm going to hover over that pin. I'm going to get a red dot, which says that I'm going to start drawing a jumper wire or a breadboard wire um, on there. So I'm going to click and release and I'm going to come down, click and release and uh, click and release. And then I'm going to come all the way over here to the first dot on the plus rail and it makes a line. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I've got my um, wires nice and clean. And then you can see this one's at a slight angle. I can grab these handles and move this around. And you can see as I move right, it's going to snap to horizontal and vertical. So I can make these look very clean, very sharp like this. The other thing I'm going to do is that typically our plus wires are always red. And in this case, this, this jumper doesn't necessarily need to be red but just to make it visually obvious to me that that wire is going to the uh, plus five volts rail, I'm going to make it red. The other thing is I'm going to put in a ground cable. So up here, there is a ground on the Arduino. I'm going to click on the ground and I'm going to do the same thing. Now you can see these wires kind of snap so I can start off at least with getting a nice vertical and a horizontal wire. But as I come over here, I kind of eye up. It doesn't give me a snap to the negative so I can Come over here, put it to my negative, and now I can kind of grab this and then make my things so they snap. And this time I'm going to make this one black. Typically the ground is a black wire. So now I've got my red and my black uh, cables hooked up to my breadboard. The next thing we're going to do is for example number one, we are going to use a LED. And an LED is going to require an LED and it's going to require a 330 ohm resistor. So let's go and get those components. So over on the right hand side, we're going to scroll up and find our LED. Now in this case, I'm going to click and drag our LED onto our screen. And again, it, this time it pops up a window, it asks for a name, but it also asks for a color. So if we want, we can actually select a different color LED uh, to make this uh, a little more personal if we want. I'm going to select a green LED for this one because it shows up nice uh, on the screen. In this case, I'm going to rotate this component. I want it to be horizontal so I can move it and put it in the right location. And in this case, I'm going to zoom in a little bit over here because I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it right here. Now you can see it kind of snaps to our, our breadboard, so it makes those connections um, very cleanly. And what we're going to do is then we're going to get our resistor. So the resistor I'm going to bring over, and that's going to be connected to our anode side of our LED. So I'm going to put it in the next hole over. So now with these being in the same row, those are electrically connected together in our circuit. Now, with our, LED, our resistor selected, it's asking us for the resistance. So, again, we're going to make it 330 ohms, and we need to make sure we click this drop down. It's in kilo ohms by default, and we're going to go to ohms right there. So now we've got our resistor and our LED put in place. 
now we need to hook it up. So one thing that we need to do is we need to make a jumper from the LED, the outlet side or the cathode side, the flat side of this LED to ground. And in this case, we're gonna go from this point right here and I'm gonna go over to our ground rail. And I will click there and it gives us a, a jumper. And in this case, I'm gonna switch that to orange just so I, I can see it a little bit. Now, the other thing is we have to go from this uh, side of the L, uh, the resistor. Now, remember, in your uh, microcontroller packets that I passed out to you in class, it has this wiring diagram in there so you can follow along how to make this um, from that packet. And you are going to need that packet to, for other reference material for completing other practice exercises. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here, and actually I'm gonna do a zoom to fit, and then I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because what we need to do is we need to go from pin seven, pin seven over to our LED. So I'm gonna go from pin seven here. I'm gonna come up, and then I'm gonna go all the way over to our joint there. And I'm going to make this an orange wire also. And now what we have is we've got our entire circuit wired up, our Arduino all set, ready to go, and we're good to go. So now what we need to do is we need to program our Arduino. And the way we do that is we click on the code button up at the top of the screen here, upper right area, and we click on the code, and it's gonna bring up a window sliding in from the right. And there's a little drop down here, it says blocks. If you click the drop down there, it says blocks, blocks, and text, and text. What I want you to do is to do the text. Uh, it's gonna give us a, a, a window. Are you sure you wanna continue as text only? And we're gonna say yes. And in this case, now that I've got the um, uh, text, it gives us a sample program. And this sample program is actually a blink sample, blink program which is set up so it'll blink the onboard LED at a rate of uh, on for one second and off for one second. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this program because it has our void setup loop, our void setup section, and our void loop section, which is what we need for our program. Now, our exercise number one is set up for pin seven. So I need to go up here to the pin mode and we need to tell it that pin seven is going to be our output pin. So we're going to change that to seven. And then for our void loop, we are going to turn on and off our LED attached to pin seven. So I'm going to turn that to seven. And I'm also going to put seven for our digital write to pin seven. Now, <clears throat> there's also the delay. So the delay is how long the light is going to be on or the LED is going to be on. Once we turn the LED on, the next line is going to be delay, and it's just going to wait there. So we're going to wait for two seconds. That's 2,000 milliseconds. And uh, this comment here says, says 1,000. That was from the previous program. We don't need to update that. And if we wanted to, we could actually get rid of that comment because those don't even have anything to do with the running of the program other than it tells us what that line is. Uh, is doing or we're just annotating it for ease of looking at it um, later on. So we're going to turn it on for two seconds, then we're going to turn it off, and then we're going to wait for another one second, and then void loop always loops and loops and loops, and it's going to go and go and go until we stop it. So at this point, we've got our program written, we've got our Arduino uh, wired up, uh, we're all set to go. So what I want to do here is I want to be able to see my uh, circuit and my and my text program at the same time. So I'm gonna come over here and click on the zoom to fit. And you can see now I can see my, my everything on the screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start to run this program. And to do that, we're gonna say, click on the start simulation up at the top right of the screen. And it's going to, once it turns green, it is running. And you can see that our LED, our green LED is now flashing. Uh, it's on for two seconds, off for a second, on for two seconds, off for a second. Our program is running as it should be. Now, I want to talk a little bit about syntax. Um, obviously, we had this program pretty much written, 
as you go through and make uh, more of the exercises, you're going to have to be typing in these commands. And at sometimes you may write a run your program and it's not going to work properly. And I want to show you what that's going to look like. So to get back and edit our program, we need to go in and stop the simulation. Once we stop the simulation, we can edit our text. Well, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to intentionally make an error in our program. And in words, the first digital right here is I'm going to delete the I. So I have misspelled uh, or typed in digital right improperly. And I think I'm all done with my program now. And I'm going to go try to run it and see what happens. We go up to start simulation. And what happens is it says, sorry, it seems like your code has some errors. Now the program, and just like the Arduino IDE in reality, it will highlight that line that it is having difficulty with. So a lot of times this will help you identify where your error is. Some are easy to identify, others are a little bit more complicated to identify. So um, in this case, I can go to the line, I can look at my command, and I can see, ah yes, I forgot my I in here. So I can modify that so it's digital right and it will uh, update that. And now what I can do is I can try running it again or doing the start simulation. And it's going to recompile it. It's going to double check it and it's back and it's running normal now. So we're all set. So at this point, we can stop the simulation. Now what I want to do is I want you to make sure that you save this program or this save this circuit and the program. So what happens is if we look up at the top here, it says all changes saved. It automatically saves these, these files. Now it puts it under kind of this random name over on the right hand or up on the upper left side. And I want to go in and show you how to do this. The, the way that I know how to do it is if we go back to the Tinkercad home screen, which if we click on the upper Tinkercad symbol here, it's going to take us all the way back to our Tinkercad home and we're going to go to circuits. If it doesn't come back to circuits, click on the circuits and you can see here is that circuit that we were just working on. If you click on the options and then go to properties, now we have the name of our project. So in this case, I'm going to say this is uh, exercise number one. And we'll scroll all the way down and we click save changes. Now we can see it changes it to say exercise number one on the screen and it is now saved. We can go back into this by clicking. Uh, if we click on that circuit, it's going to take us to kind of this overview screen. Um, and to really modify it, we need to go in and say tinker this and we can go in and then we can modify our circuit, modify our program and all that kind of stuff uh, in here. So that's how we get, uh, we change the name and now we're all set. So at this point we can go back. This one is complete exercise one done. Now you can go in here and now you can start your second exercise and you can just click on create new circuit and move forward. I want you to make, be sure to go through and do all, all of the exercises that I've passed out to you. Uh, hopefully that gives you a good overview that is that should get you started. You should be able to do all nine exercises kind of with those basic commands. Uh, you will be able to go in there and a lot of the stuff is fairly intuitive and now that you kind of know your way around. Um, to kind of play on your own and learn more about the software itself. That's all I've got and good luck to you.